Michaels, doctor, expert on all things climate and environment as far as I'm concerned, a little bit of your background. You're the director of the Center for Study of Science at the Cato Institute. You hold an AB and SM. You hold those degrees in uh, biology, sciences, and plant ecology from the University of Chicago. Pretty good school. PhD in ecological climatology from the University of Wisconsin at Madison, 1979. You're past president of the American Association of State Climatologists. You were program chairman for the Committee on Applied Climatology of the American Meteorological Society. Say that fast five times. Yeah. You were research professor of environmental sciences at the University of Virginia for 30 years, and I'm giving an extensive you know, background that you have. I'm, I'm giving that to the uh, public so they know you really know what you're talking about. Um, and you're a contributing author and a reviewer of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2007. All right, let's get started. Climate change, global warming, global cooling, we've heard it all. What's going on out there? Well, the surface temperature of the planet is warmer than it was 100 years ago, about nine-tenths of a degree Celsius. Nine-tenths of a degree Celsius. That's all. Is that a lot? No, it's not a lot. There are two periods of warming, one in the early 20th century that could not have been caused by human beings because we hadn't put enough CO2 in the air, and one in the later part of the 20th century that either slows down or ends, depending upon whose data you use, somewhere in the late 1990s, uh, only to resume with the big El Nino that covered the news over the last couple of years. Uh, so that means that probably about half, maybe half, of that nine-tenths of a degree might be caused by greenhouse gases. Because when the planet warmed beginning in 1976, the temperature of the stratosphere started to drop. And that's a prediction of greenhouse theory that's not intuitive. You know, the great philosopher of science, Karl Popper, said, if you can meet a difficult prediction with your theory, you can continue to entertain your theory. So the theory is right, but the application of it is wrong. It is nowhere near as warm as it's supposed to be. The computer models are making systematic, dramatic errors over the entire tropics, which is 40% of the Earth, and it's where all our moisture comes from, or almost all of it. And let me stop you there. Yeah. Who does these computer models? Governments. There are 32 families of computer models that are used by the United Nations, each government-sponsored, uh, and all of them are predicting far, far too much warming. The disparity between what's been predicted to happen, which looks like this, and what is happening continues to grow. We know that for a fact. Yeah, you can, because you can just look at the weather balloon temperatures, you can look at the satellite temperatures, you can look at something called the reanalysis data. They all behave in concert. So they're showing the same thing, and the same thing is a lot different than this thing. However, we need to call the special counsel. Special counsel? Yes, because one model works. And you know what it is? It's the Russian model. So let me get this. So all the government models are like this. Yeah. The Russian model is like this. Yeah. The Russian model has the least warming in it. And the Russian model is the least warming, and the Russian model pretty much follows reality. Yeah. What's been tested over a few decades. Yeah, correct. You know, you know if we were rational about this, think about the daily weather forecast. You know, you watch the weather channel, they go, oh, this model says that, that model says that. We think this one's working the best, so we're going to rely on that. Well, for climate forecast, we should be using the Russian model, but we're not. We use this big spate of all the other models that have this warming in them that's not occurring. Why are all these other government models, 31 of them, I guess, yeah. wrong? And why do they all go in the same direction, up? Be because they are what is called parameterized. That's, they're all parameterized. Can I translate parameterized into English? Fudged. Okay. The don't get the right answer, don't know the right answer for certain phenomena. So we essentially put in code steps that give us what we think it should be. And the systematic error that was made was the models were tuned, as it said, tuned. Tuned 
to simulate the warming of the early 20th century. began in 1910, ended in 1945, about 0.45 degrees Celsius. Mark, that could not have been caused by carbon dioxide. Because there wasn't enough. We had to put enough in. The, the background carbon dioxide concentration is 280 parts per million. When the second, first warming started, it was 298 parts per million. If the atmosphere is that sensitive to an 18 ppm change in CO2, we wouldn't be talking about this right, right now, and we'd be sweating bullets. So what you're saying is man-made carbon dioxide earlier, the last century, could not have produced the early 20th century. Early 20th century could not have produced this heat. So what did? Do we know? Uh, no. And you know, three most important words in life may not know. be I love you. It yeah. might be I don't know. I don't think anybody really knows what kicked off the, that warming. There's a, lots of theories. One is that it was the final escape from a cold period, multi-century period known as the Little Ice Age. That's a plausibility, but why did it happen then? Uh, but we just don't really have a good explanation for that. But because we forced the computer models to say, aha, human influence, CO2 and other stuff, we made the models too sensitive. And so that's why when you get to the late 20th century, all of a sudden they're warming up like crazy and the reality's down here. It was, it was guaranteed to happen. There, this was revealed in Science Magazine in late 2016. Uh, and there was a paper that was published uh, by a French climate modeler called The Art and Science of Climate Model Tuning. And in it, he speaks of parameterizing, we could say fudging, the models to give his words an anticipated acceptable range of results. So it's the scientist, not the science, that's determining how much it's going to warm. I, a lot of people don't know this, but it happens to be true. And, you know, we could speculate as to why that paper was published right before the 2016 election. Um, I wouldn't want to impute causation, but gee, if... But I want to ask you about causation. Sure. You have 31 governments. No, the 31 different models. Some of All them right, the 31 different models, yeah. the multiple governments. Right. We're fudging the numbers. They're not fudging them. They're, They're fudging the models. Parameterizing them. Okay, well, you use the word fudging. Um, does our EPA do that? Does NASA do that? Ah, Who does that for Ah, aha. Good question, Mark. Because the EPA was told by the Supreme Court in 2007 that if it found that carbon dioxide endangered human health and welfare, that it had the power to regulate it under the Clean Air Act. This is the Massachusetts That's case. That's the EPA. Well, they produced an endangerment finding in 2009. And the endangerment finding for its prospective climate is 100%. I didn't say 90%. I said 100% based on those models. So if you can demonstrate that those models systematically are not working, you can take down the endangerment finding. Uh, and that would be the basis for all those policies that came out of the Obama administration. Which would mean you don't get to regulate Absolutely. carbon dioxide. Absolutely. The endangerment finding is the heart of the matter. And to give you an idea how gung-ho the Obama administration was on this issue, if you listen to his first inaugural speech, January 20th, 2009, it's the second substantive paragraph of the speech is about global warming after health care. 90 days after he finished that speech, his EPA produced a preliminary finding of endangerment from carbon dioxide. They were working on this before he was president. Bureaucrats can't work that fast. And then the final finding was made in December for the uh, co climate conference in Copenhagen that was supposed to produce another global warming. So you're agreement. telling us that we have a massive bit of public policy that has an yeah. enormous effect on society Absolutely. that's built on, I'll use my word, phony models. It's built on a house of cards. The models really don't work. And, and if I could really be arcane, I can explain the mechanism uh, uh, as to why they don't work. As long as I understand it. 
The models systematically predict that as you go up in the atmosphere in the tropics, which are 40% of the Earth, that the temperature should rise dramatically as you go further up in the atmosphere. So when you get to the level of the jet stream, the computer models are predicting seven times, I didn't say seven tenths of a degree, I said seven times more warming than is being observed. Well, why is that important? Why am I boring you with that? Because it's the vertical distribution of temperature that determines upward motion, which means it determines precipitation. And guess what? Almost all the atmospheric moisture that we have around us today in humid Washington, D.C., that comes from the tropics. So if you get that vertical motion wrong down there, you get all the subsequent variables wrong. It's a fantastic systematic error. And again, that along with the difference between the surface temperatures, or, or rather the lower atmospheric temperatures and what's being observed, that's sufficient to kill the endangerment finding. Okay, so to the average pedestrian like me, if you get that wrong, what does that mean? You get all the weather models wrong? You get, you get the wrong? subsequent weather wrong. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, that, that's why, if you look at all these families of models, they predict radically different changes in precipitation from model to model. Well, probably because they got the precipitation initialization out of the tropics wrong. Precipitation is important. I offer you uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. As an example, the precipitation is important coming from the tropics. Get that wrong, and you get that wrong. Is weather getting worse? No. The, 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 I love that question, because uh, what do you really want to look at? Roger Pilkey, Jr. at uh, University of Colorado does this. Uh, yes, there's more damage from weather, because there's more stuff and people and property in the way of weather. So what you really want to look at are weather damages as a percent of GDP. And when you look at it that way, there's nothing whatsoever. Oh, I'm sure hurricanes are getting worse. I heard that on every legacy network uh, during uh, Lawrence. Florence and Harvey and all that stuff. Well, the fact of the matter is you can, there's a guy by the name of Ryan Maui who's just a hotshot young tropical meteorologist. He's also an adjunct scholar at the Cato Institute. And he tracks the energy in these tropical cyclones. Since they, we got global records that begin in 1970, and you would think there would be some relationship between that integrated energy and global warming. After all, it's only logical. Vice President Gore says that must be the case. It's not. There's no relationship whatsoever between the accumulated cyclone energy and the surface temperature of the Earth. It's just not there. Now, what, wait, wait a minute. Why does our government say this? They said it in their uh, last report called uh, Global Climate Change Impacts in the United States. They said, oh, there's been a significant increase in hurricane power in the Atlantic Ocean uh, from like 1970 to 2009 or something like that, 1980 to 2009. Well, wait a minute. Why'd you stop in 2009? It's a 2014 report. Because if you take the data after 2009, the increase goes away and it goes back to where it was. Or why did you start in the mid-1970s? Because we have records that are really good back to 1920. And if you look 1920 to 1950, you see an increase that is exactly the same as the one that occurred. So, the, so the information they're providing us is, is, is skewed. Incomplete. It's skewed. It's skewed. They're cherry-picking. Uh -huh. And here we rely on the climatologists, the right. meteorologists, and they become hyper-political. And I want to get back 